Ms. Cushman? One thing that has caused me to ponder from this, from a lot of things that have been happening is whether it's unintentional or intentional that we recognize that our students are going to encounter things on the internet that we wish they would never have seen. And it has led me to think a lot about internet safety. Um, there was an event that was hosted at as Nantuck Community College back in 2018 on human trafficking awareness, and it was for our community. And it, um, one of the liaisons for um, D DCF was sharing a statistic that I found rather alarming. That um, their statistic for here in Connecticut was that the majority of, of children being trafficked are children that are living at home with one or both of their parents. And it's not that they're being trafficked by their parents, it's that the parents don't recognize the signs of trafficking. And so it becomes something that is happening in a safe place in the home um, where the child is connecting because it's undoubtedly always due to the internet. That's the new place where kids meet exploiters. And so it had me thinking about that statistic, but also thinking about now with the pandemic, iPads were a great tool. They were a tool that we used in order to be able to bring our instruction home when the schools were closed. But yet, now we have students that never, under any other circumstances, might have young students that might have this technology. And what are we doing to pr protect them? Um, we're seeing, if that was in 2018, where it was over 50% of our students, of, of children being trafficked, were living at home, how under the pandemic conditions, how much more so when kids are so much more online for school, for socialization, for entertainment, how much more so could those statistics have rose that now exploiters use um, the internet to, to reach children. And in the church community that I'm a part of, we did have a student through YouTube connected with someone who exploited them, was able to manipulate them and get their information, knew where they lived. And these are things that I think are alarming for all of us. Um, I did have an opportunity last year to talk with Mr. Dresick about hosting an event um, for our families here to better equip them with knowing um, how to handle technology in the home and knowing how to find um, and recognize the signs of trafficking in their own children. And I know a lot of the COVID, you know, all, all, everything with all the mandates and things made it difficult for us to host such an event in person, but I'm hoping that as things are um, with fewer mandates, that I'm hoping that we can, we can revisit the possibility of hosting such an event again soon. Um, on a lighter note, I just have connected with um, recently the Enfield First Readers Association. Um, they held their first meeting on Zoom on January 12th, the first meeting of the year, I should say. First Readers is a unique town-wide program that recognizes and celebrates a key milestone in our children, in our students, and that's becoming a reader. There is a drive-through celebration ceremony that's planned for May 23rd at Asnuntuck Community College, where our first readers will receive a first reader certificate, medal, and a t-shirt. As always in any kind of event like this, volunteers are needed. If you're interested in being part of the recognition and celebration of Enfield's first readers, you can check out their Facebook page or you can reach out to me, or I know Jonathan's part of it as well. The next meeting for first readers is planned for Wednesday, February 23rd at 5 p.m. via Zoom. So thank you. <laughs>